Hi, uh, welcome to the sandy dunes of Atlantic Beach. I'm Gary Allen, your host today, and we'll be trying to accomplish a few things. Number one is we're going to build a walkway all the way around between the sides of the house to the dunes, as well as install an automatic irrigation system before we're even ready to install plants on today's Designer's Landscape. behind me here a new home and new construction we're really not going to be interested in that we're paying attention to this existing home and we'll landscape from here on back uh, I could show you we had a, a large uh, cedar tree here that we have removed and we've come in and done some grading this was piled up and like we mentioned the big sand dune we've come and somewhat leveled that so that uh, we don't have so much erosion uh, and, and wash off there I kind of want to bring you up the dune to the back and show you some things there. As you can tell, I hope, it's a little bit rough out there on the beach today. And so we're battling the wind and the sand in our eyes and everything. But I thought we'd take a moment and look at some of the natural or native vegetation that grows here. We'll be talking about salt tolerance and how that plays an important role in the plants we choose in the future. But take a look over here to uh, our right the magnolia, magnolia grandiflora, again, a natural or a native that will take the salt bursts and the salt air here. And then we go to the cabbage palms, sable palmetto. This is the Florida state palm. And all these are native, by the way, naturally induced to, to this dune, if you will. And then other vegetation for dune control are really what's come up over a period of time. The live oaks uh, mixed with bay trees and wax myrtles, again, helping us to appreciate what will tolerate all this salt out here. Adding a sprinkler system back here is really going to help us grow plants to stabilize the dune. And we begin with the back patio. This will be the beginning of our walk or the end of it, depending how you look at it. But it'll come out here and head down the berm or down the hill. Really, from this angle, things should change dramatically with our wall and our walkway, with irrigation, landscape, even night lighting. Well, with most of the irrigation installed, uh, let's talk about our sprinkler system. I want to introduce you to Don Smith of Bold City. Hi, Gary. How are you Don, doing? Don, I appreciate you guys' uh, hard work here today. You all sure. are moving at a pretty good pace. Yeah, once we get going, we, we have a tendency to knock it out pretty quick. No rotors, no big spray heads here. Uh, uh, all, all spray heads or the, the shrub zones, huh? Right, Gary. In this particular layout here, it's all smaller, condensed, uh, what we would call our zoning areas and we're trying to apply even amount of watering within these particular zones. And again, they're all smaller areas which really don't require the throw or the higher gallonage that we typically get out of our rotors. Okay, uh, your water source here for today is uh, city water? Yeah, generally we, we come in and investigate uh, the uh, water source that's available to us, be it that it's city water and or well water. And of course, one of the critical aspects of using city water is to have that backflow in place which is a mandatory protection device for our water supply. Device, exactly. sure. Does uh, this project uh, propose any special problems for you? I mean I know you had to cross under the driveway. Yes this one's a little unique in that it's an existing landscape for one thing and of course when we do our engineering for our systems we've got to get from point A to B and in this case here it was getting across the driveway and uh, in that case, we have uh, a couple techniques that we use for jetting across the driveway. The good old water hose. The good yeah. old water hose. Now, that works in sand. I know uh, some of the friends up north in clay and all, they might Well, then there, the there's other devices that are more mechanical for doing that. Well, and then you can always through. cut the concrete, which is kind of a, a last ditch thing, but Hate it's been known that. to happen. Well, no happen. big roots in the way. So we hope that part of it at least went easy for yeah, you. Yeah, it's most sandy soil. There was some palm, you know, uh, rooting in here. But uh, again, with a little determination, we can get our lines across. Super. And really, I see uh, you've got your valves in place. And this is what we call our valving manifold exactly up here. This is where all our laterals will lead to. And then from that point, it distributes out through the zones, which are individually valved. Perfect. Um, will this sandy soil 
You know, will we have to water it uh, or consider that, the particulars of it? Typically, our sandy soils here, Gary, which is, you know, indicative to being close to the beach, will require more of a cycling effort uh, on the controller, being that we, there's not a, a lot of organic material in the soils to hold moisture. Mm -hmm. so, so an hour after you water this, it can even be dried. It'll come out on... and it'll probably be dried, dry to the touch. And again, we're trying to focus on getting a real deep watering within the engineering of the system. Well, we hope to use some natives and some of those that will That'll adapt help to accommodate sandy that. soil. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you had red flags over here, blue behind me. And now in this little native area, the live oaks, you've got yellow. So that means a separate zone? Yeah, we typically we'll come in and we'll uh, color code the zones. And that helps my installers knowing that this is the area that we want contained within the zone. Sure. And the other focus on the flags is that I can stand by and get a visual of all the heads. And I can see if there's a, a void that might not be getting water to some extent. And then if that's the case, I can shift uh, the flags to accommodate those voids and or add more heads if we need to. Um, what about this as far as being a shady or the, one of the shadiest spots of the That's property? another condition we always investigate on our jobs. Are you always have your full sun areas, you know, your northwest explo northeast exposures. Uh, in this case here, this is typically an area under a, a, a canopy, so it'll more or less stay in a shade condition. So again, the purpose for zoning would be to isolate this area from the others so that we can apply a regulated amount of watering bypassed of the other zones. And of course our controllers that we use allow us to do that. The new digital controllers that are out now are perfect for this kind of scenario. A lot of flexibility in a your lot watering of flexibility. programs or There's scheduling. Just amazing uh, what they're coming out now, the new technologies in, in our controller use. Well, That was a good point here about uh, we find a property like this is broken up into kind of microclimates. We would if call you it a microclimate to Sun, get technical. Shade. Exactly. And so you can keep this watering uh, under control where you're not dumping too much here and to have the Exactly. We'll also. probably get into a condition where this will require maybe 60% less watering than maybe our full sun areas. Sure. Uh, and again, the whole thing in engineering the zones too is uh, water conservation. We all know that it's important in this day and age and as a responsibility for installers, we try and, and get it to the point where we're regulating the areas to just get the right amount of water for what needs to be used and not waste any of it. Oh, that's important today. I noticed uh, the wind up top on the back, uh, any special? Wind always poses a problem when you're facing the uh, northeast conditions like that. Uh, what we're going to find is uh, we've zoned that area, bypassed of all the other areas, and that again, this will be a special area that will require special programming gotcha. that it may cycle more and more often than what these other areas to accommodate the wind conditions. Okay. Uh, you guys have been here really just for the better part of the morning, and you're getting close to. Uh, the you've final covered touches. Up, yeah, yeah. Blowing the system, setting your heads. Exactly. And, the controller mount. You'll be out of here. We'll be done, and uh, it'll be a good project. Hey, hope to see you again. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, we've been doing some grading in preparation for our hardscape to be installed, and I want to introduce you to the man with the plan. That's Mike Costello with Paver Systems. Mike? Hey, Gary. How are you doing today? Good to see you, man. Good um, to see you, too. Tell us what product we're going to use here. Well, we have our sidewalk material here, which is a Holland stone and it's a blend of the red tan and charcoal. That'll make our walkway. Okay. And uh, for our retaining wall that we got our levels up there, we're gonna be using a new product called Highland Stone from Anchor Wall. Okay, this is the front face. This will be the front face. And the top here, okay. Uh, looks good, I guess. Uh Come on up and tell me how we've been doing. I mean, my goal was to at least get this graded out a little bit so we could see or brainstorm some of the ideas or concepts here. Yeah, uh, it looks really good and we're about ready. Um, we got our bank set for the wall. Uh, the installer will go ahead and put a sand down and get this thing going and start from the bottom and work up. Yeah, my, my thought here too was uh, we had really a, a bunch of dirt here that we've excavated or pulled out. And a thought was to make kind of a landing here so that uh, we're down close to driveway, if you will, height. And then our first big climb here, huh? Is that going to work? Yeah, that should work out real well. We'll probably have to make sure we contain this ground here along the edge of the wall. So we'll probably have to come out someplace around here and kind of curve the wall around that way. Well, that'll look better than just the, the straight line that 
that we left for you. Yeah, not only that, when you work with the curve, you got a little bit more strength in your wall, too. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Uh, where will you start in this uh, project? Right from the bottom and work on our way up. That way it doesn't, you know, if you work from the top down, you get some spreadage. Work from the bottom up, it keeps the stuff material tight. Okay, so like you build the foundation from the bottom up. From the bottom which up. Which makes perfect sense. Well, uh, sorry about this little hardware section, but... Um, uh, cable, phone line, we found the gas line, and irrigation pipes going through here. Uh, hopefully we can make this work, huh? We'll work around it as best we can, move it what little bit we can. We'll do the best we can, and, uh, but I think pretty much as it sits, we can kind of manage around. Uh, you talked about the wall coming out, so uh, really we'll get closer to grade than where these pipes are. Yeah, we should be down someplace down in here crossing the, the major section. Yeah. I just put the railroad ties in here to, uh, for the homeowner to be able to utilize the embankment uh, for the time being, but what do you say we go up and see how our, our ramp will develop, huh? Let's look at it. Mike, uh, sharing with you the hopes, uh, concept that the homeowner wanted, rather than have a bunch of steps here, we thought a combination of ramping the walkway and eliminating as many steps as possible. Is that going to be all right? It makes it easier. Uh, you know, you, the steps are your most laborious part of the job. Uh -huh. So, you know, the ramps are easier. And actually, for the homeowner, for what she wants, it's going to be easier for her to, you know, navigate back and forth up and down. Through. Well, and that was the other point. Um, if you took uh, the top of this banding, which is really where we need to end up over there, you look at the big gap. I don't know. That's almost 10 to 12 feet of stepping we'd have. Yeah, so if we can to... eliminate a lot of those, then that'll be good, huh? Yeah, just do it in a ramp. Now, the steepness of this, too, we look for you guys to fine-tune to kind of show us where to go. But I thought right here would be, we had step, step, major there, and this won't be so major, but another wall and step right here. Yeah, I think this is, it should be cut here in the middle. Since we got another one up there, it makes the ramp a little less steep, you know, okay. trying to make it easy to navigate by foot. Now, the other thing I'm thinking of landscape-wise is with the wall spinning out behind you, you're standing in what'll be a... A landscape area so we can put trees and some tall stuff to cover the AC units here um, some specimens with some lighting so that it'll really enhance the walk through here a little bit huh? it's definitely going to change what you're currently looking at so Mike really checking with you this is our third little step in the process is this location good do you think? yeah it's going to work out real well it's, uh, it gives a little bit of a curve to the walkway. It doesn't allow for the water to pick up a lot of momentum going down like it would on a straight uh, run. Okay, that is a good point. I mean, we are curving this, so to add a little more character to it. Uh, I feel like this is our upper deck or plateau, and we've somewhat maintained a level feel there, kind of almost level on the bottom, and then all the work is between here and there, huh? Yes, all the work is definitely in the middle. <laughs> and we can, we can come in flush with... Uh, with this, maybe a little pad. This doesn't have to be square. We could, it can take on any shape you think is proper. Yeah, we, the, the design flexibility is immense here. You can just do anything you would like through here. Okay. Uh, again, look forward to this uh, changing over. We'll be starting the construction pretty soon. Huh? And this is going to be exciting. Now I really want to uh, spend time talking with Glenn Bullard of Demeco Block. Glenn, tell us about this block in particular. What we've got here is, is a new product that we brought out called a Highland Stone. It's uh, a little bit more uh, structural than what you typically run into in the home market. Um, give, it gives you a little more versatility. How, heav how heavy are these guys? Because they're You're looking at about 60, 67 pounds okay, in so this range. This size, I'm not going to find at my local garden center. No, you won't. Uh, you, and this, the application is a little different as well. Okay, um, and I mentioned that because most of the homeowners still deal with the small walls, and that's fine, but you have a limit on how tall you can build a wall out of that, that well, smaller material. Typically, you're looking at, at you know, two to three feet type of a landscape application in, in the, smaller, the smaller systems, whereas here you can get into something a little more structural like the project we're working on now. Okay, and that's what we want, really, something durable to, to take on the shape and really hold its strength. What else can you tell us about the block? Well, what we're offering with this is something a little aesthetically different in terms of color, color variation, um, what we can do with the system, uh, more of a natural stone approach okay. rather than a typical concrete type product. And this, this can be our steps as well as some of the walling too, I understand. Right, we can incorporate step units into the system uh, okay. with, with this product as well. Super. Uh, can't wait to start 
watching this ball come together. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, what do you think? The neighbors seem to be impressed. The contractor likes it. The homeowners like it. And I'm tickled about it, as you can tell. I just like that fine tuning. This is beautiful, this little pad up top. And we've had really some design build changes. So I wanna share that with you from our original plan. Uh, if you even recall, if we go back before we had our hardscape in, we had this little area dug out and we talked about putting steps and ramps. Well, we eliminated the steps here. We made the ramp come all the way through the wall. We continued that process as we go down the hill. If you remember too, we were thinking about a step in here. The homeowner stressed to us that the ramp concept would be more preferable to them. And so uh, again, the ramp wouldn't be so steep if we had these two sets of stairs. As a result of it, we've got a little bit of a steep incline here to work with, but they like it, it's comfortable. So in that respect, it really works. Can you imagine when we get our landscape in now, how it's gonna to come together? So all the work that is involved is right here. One, two, three, four, five, five steps. You see the intensity, but the ramp takes us up the rest of the way. So the wall had to come in in this enclosure. If you remember too, we dropped all this down so that we would be smooth and be able to transition all the way to our driveway. Take one more look here because things will now change. Let's bring our trees in and really set some height and do some screening. Hopefully you've noticed our tree of choice is the East Palatka Holly. Now the red berries, the evergreen foliage that can be trimmed or shaped are essential here, but also salt tolerance. We get salt drift coming in between the homes here. Now if you notice, we use the same variety. One holly tree repeated three times. We use the same brick on the bottom and the upper deck, so why not repeat that same continuity, keeping it simple with our specimens? Uh, friends, this would be a great time to go back and reflect on all the hard work it's taken just to get to this point. Enjoy.
Now we get to decorate with salt tolerant plants and landscape lighting. I'll see you on the next program. I'm Gary Allen. So long.